welcome everyone. Today we discuss concepts on DCIS, known as ductal carcinoma in situ, and IDC, invasive ductal carcinoma. Before we start describing the different types, we should understand the progression, or at least the theory behind the progression for a common type of breast cancer being IDC. On the left, you have the normal duct with normal cells forming the ductal epithelium. With time, you can develop ductal hyperplasia or atypical ductal hyperplasia known as ADH. ADH, when found on pathology, is often excised through surgical excision because it is thought to be a precursor for DCIS and subsequently IDC. So the progression could be from left to right and ADH can be considered a premalignant lesion. That's why here in the diagram you see one of the cells being labeled as a cancer cell. Then we move to DCIS. DCIS is very famous because it can be detected in mammogram due to calcifications. The calcification might be adjacent to the area of DCIS or might be related directly to the area of DCIS. The pathology for this varies and recent articles have suggested a different treatment depending on the risk factors for a patient. So while we know this might be a premalignant lesion or a malignant lesion since we're already calling it carcinoma in situ, some articles suggest that the mortality or the long-term mortality might not change significantly with our treatment. However, I think we're still in the early stages of this analysis and it is important to consult that specific concept with your doctor and decide what is the best treatment when you're diagnosed with DCIS, for example. In the event DCIS extends beyond the duct, it's called or considered invasive ductal carcinoma. Once we talk about invasive ductal carcinoma, we'll discuss the different subtypes. But moving back to DCIS, remember we said this could be identified by calcifications. And in this slide, you see different types of calcifications from a mammogram, and they're described as amorphous, fine pleomorphic, coarse erogenous, fine linear, and fine linear branching. All these terms are very specific and they carry a different prognostic value. The main points I want you to take home from this slide is that not all amorphous calcifications are going to be malignant. For example, fibrocystic changes can cause amorphous calcifications, which is likely, most likely, and sclerosing adenosis or a columnar cell change can cause amorphous type of calcification. However, low-grade DCIS ductal carcinoma in situ can also present like the calcification here being amorphous. When we talk about coarse heterogeneous, the one in the left, lower left hand corner, we can say that if this is DCIS, it's probably going to be a low to intermediate grade. However, there's still in theory some benign lesions that or benign pathology that can present like that. Once we move to the fine linear or fine pleomorphic, we're a lot more concerned about the possibility of cancer, specifically a high-grade DCIS. Leaving DCIS behind and talking about invasive ductal carcinoma, which is already when we're talking about a mass or an invasive breast cancer, it actually composes about 85% of the invasive breast cancers. The other uh, percentage, the other 15%, is likely gonna be ILC, invasive lobular carcinoma. From the subtypes for IDC, the most common is uh, IDC NOS. NOS stands for not otherwise specified. So it's not a very specific name. However, it is the main component of IDC types. It composes about 65% of this group. And I've added some descriptors for every type so that you can remember uh, some buzzwords related to all the different types. For example, the IDC-NOS is gonna be the most common one. 
is going to be a hard, no mobile mass, and it's usually painless. The tubular carcinoma or the tubular type of IDC it is, is often associated with speculated appearance on the mammogram and is also associated with a radial scar. Mucinous and medullary are known for being more round. However, the medullary one is associated with younger patients and usually you don't have calcifications in that area. The mucinous is also round and is also associated with a better outcome than IDC and OS. Finally, papillary, the buzzword will be a complex cystic and solid mass and it's actually the second most common subtype after IDC and OS. So with this summary, we have reviewed two basic concepts about breast cancer. Number one is the progression or the proposed theory behind ductal hyperplasia progressing to ADH, atypical ductal hyperplasia, and subsequently into DCIS, which is ductal carcinoma in situ. We have learned also that the treatment for DCIS might vary and new data is suggesting that we should consider treatment in a very individual basis for this type of cancer. Finally, we talked about IDC and the different subtypes with IDC and how they present with different characteristics and prognosis. Thank you very much and please don't forget to subscribe.